My name is Martin Quinn. I'm the regional lead for involvement, co-production and partnership working and employed by the Public Health Agency and working across the health and social care system. I'm really just trying to advocate for that approach that it's embedded into the commissioning, the planning or the development uh, and indeed the evaluation of services. Um, and for us, this is about making sure that service users, cares and indeed the public have their say, that um, their voices are heard and that they can help influence uh, those, uh, you know, those considerations around uh, what we what we commission, what we deliver, um, that we are making best use of their experience, that we are taking on board their expertise as service users or cares, and recognising that that has a value. One of the greatest things about involvement and getting involved in decisions about services is that it, there's a whole range of different ways you can do that, from the big high level deciding strategy and what things are going to look like in 20 years time right through to the very small changes that make a real difference in people's lives and make a real difference to the people that need those services so whatever level and whatever area that you're interested in there's really something for everyone to get involved in um so i've been involved with the trust and with the um with the health service in general for for a few years now and um, what i find is that um when you come together no matter what the problem is when you come together the solution is always in the room and it's great to be part of that solution uh, and what you bring to the table is just as important as what everybody else is bringing in fact sometimes more important because you're bringing the bit that can't be learned from textbooks getting involved can be can be stressful you know if you can build it up in your head you can kind of decide that you know everyone there is going to be really scary or nobody's going to listen to you but actually when you arrive there you realize that the people there who are working in healthcare are there because they want to work in healthcare because they want to help people and um when you when you engage with people like that that's when change really happens and if you're not on the sidelines you're actually in the middle of it you're in you are part of the solution and you, you leave feeling that not only have you made a difference, but you've, you've made a connection. And also the people you're with have made a connection with you. And so it kind of changes the whole thing from being like a big scary organization to just being a group of people who are trying their best with what they've got to do what they can. And now you've joined that and, and you're part of that. As my caring role increased, I realized that I had real living experiences and actually dealing with managing elderly people and actually navigating and trying to organize and, and understand what the services that were provided. Um, at that stage, actually, I felt that the care services really offered a lifeline. It gave me something of interest. I felt that I had something to say. So uh, in relation to it, I committed with uh, to, to the group and at that stage my input only required was four times a year. I realised then as my journey went on that I really was becoming an expert in relation to navigating and what the services were on offer and the challenges to other carers. So I signed up to actually then uh, be a member and input into the carers uh, strategy planning group. My thinking would be is that I could maybe input and influence what the priorities for work for carers were. I would actively encourage anybody to get involved um, in encouraging service users to be a part of developing the service and the reason for that is that as professionals we can become very locked into what we know, what we think we know, as professionals what we're seeing but we're not living that experience and I think it's about being active for, for the service users because a lot of the time people going through a cancer diagnosis feel very disempowered. They feel that everything's being channeled for them. So, you know, you have to go here for this appointment, you have to turn up for this treatment um, and you're contained for that amount of time. So for them to feel like they can give something back and to feel that also something positive can come from their experience. What we're saying to people is you've lived this experience help us to define our services and to continually improve our services by listening to what you have to offer and bringing it forward um, because there's no voice like that. In healthcare we have two key quotes that spring to mind when we think about service user involvement. One is nothing about us without us and that tells us that we shouldn't be thinking about the future of a group of service users without considering their voice in the planning or evaluation of their service. And the second is the service user voice should be heard at every table, even if that voice is only a whisper. 
So no matter how loud or how slight that voice or message is, or how little that person may have to tell us, it's important that we listen. It may be small, but it may be very important. And it's a principle that we should look for and listen to what our service users have to tell us and not to miss the nuggets of gold that may be a small piece, but may make all the difference in our service delivery for others coming behind. So if you're a staff member or indeed if you're a service user in care and you want to know how do you get involved or how can you be supported to get involved, uh, there are uh, access to people who have expertise, that's your PPI leads and others, but also you can go onto the Engage website and there's a raft of resources on there from uh, guides to training tools to, to articles that are, are of, of interest in this field. So I'd encourage you to look at that and make best use of those resources because they really are very helpful.